Hello everybody, this is Ariane Arsenault from La Fille de la Mer and today I am presenting you a new soap that I will be making with Palm Done Right organic, sustainable and ethically produced palm oil. Um, September is Palm Done Right month and this is a video to help bring awareness about this good palm oil. If you're a soap maker or if you like to use soap uh, just as a customer, you can be on the lookout for the Palm Done Right logo. It's used in foods, it's used in, in soap and other uh, products, so they have their logo on the labels. And what Palm Done Right does is that they promote uh, the deforestation free animal and wildlife friendly palm oil. It's made by farmers and not machines and chemicals. It's made mainly from South America and some parts of Africa. It does not come from the countries where palm oil is mass produced and destructs all of the natural habitat. So it is a great choice for soap makers. In my base, in my stock pot, I have some coconut oil, some organically produced palm done right palm oil, cocoa butter, and white cocoa butter. I will be then adding the olive oil and sunflower oil, my base that I've chose today. Uh, I hopefully will create a white enough soap that I will not need to use any white colorants. I will, however, be swirling it with some uh, ultramarine, uh, ultramarine <laughs> uh, violet, pink, and blue oxides. These are from Brambleberry, and they produce a really nice and vibrant color in soap. And I will also be sprinkling the top of my soap with wild flowers from the Magdalene Islands that I either grow in my garden or wild harvest. So um, I chose a slab mold for this specific design that I'm going to be doing uh, because it's a technique that requires a slab mold. And these are some new molds with silicone inserts. So I'm really, really excited about um, trying these out and see how they work. And we can all do this together. I really like this scale. I got it from Soap Equipment. It's a really large um, counting scale. I call it my soap making scale. And I can make my whole 12 kilo batch on it. No need to like split in smaller amounts. It holds up to, I think like 110 pounds. So it's a really nice scale. However, it's not the best for precise, like small measurements, but for soap making, love it. And um, I'm adding the sunflower oil here because my oils and butters that are solid are now melted. So it's time for the liquid oils. And in goes the olive oil. Because I don't like surprises, I'm gonna go ahead and add my fragrance oil in right now. And this is a home blend of two different fragrances. I wanted to, this to smell floral, but not overwhelmingly floral. So I mix it with a sweet raspberry fragrance. Um, and I've chosen two fragrances that do not accelerate trace or discolorate soap. So we should be good. Our oils and butters, as well as the lye water, have cooled down to a lower temperature and I am now ready to start mixing this batch up. I am now splitting the batter into uh, three parts so that I can color them and make a swirl in my soap.
So what I'm doing here is a drop swirl and I am simply pouring back my colors into my main stock pot and then I will be pouring into my mold. I am keeping a little bit of soap because I will be swirling the top. and to finish the flower sprinkle. The soap will sit for about 15 to 20 hours before we can unmold and cut it to reveal the designs inside. Good morning, everybody. It's time to unmold these soaps and cut them. So what I like first thing about these molds is that I can remove um, like the door here and hopefully <laughs> slide the soap out. It would be easier if both sides would yeah, no, it doesn't slide out, so I'm just going to flip it over. And hopefully <laughs> it comes out. Yes. Okay. Nice. And already I can see that the soap is releasing Wow, oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, so this is pretty cool. Um, I didn't add any sodium lactate to this batch, and I did do a 15% water discount to help the soap firm up a little bit because um, sometimes silicone, silicone molds do get uh, a, little, a little sticky. So I'm just gonna put this back yep, in here. Oh gosh, look at this, <laughs> this is so wobbly. Okay, I'm just going to put it back in place and then I'll clean it up later. See how easy it is to put it back in position. Yesterday, uh, we made this soap together in the video, and then this one I made on Instagram via Instagram Live. Um, if you didn't get it, well, it's gone. <laughs> Sorry about that. But I did try two different design, like swirling designs. So while this one was an in the pot swirl, this one was a drop swirl. So I'll see which of the two we like best, and you can tell me in the comments below. 
So just slicing through the soap. So easy with my log splitter from for craft sakes. And voila. This little blue mold I got from Candle Science or Soap Science. And let's see how the release goes. Voila, nice and neat. Okay, so let's cut this one first. And now, the big soap. <laughs> this one was made doing the drop swirl. I mean, the, the in the pot swirl. And this mold was rather um, overfilled. <laughs> so it's a big, big chunk of soap. Um, let's see. It looks like a stormy weather. Hmm, I wonder why, I wonder why. Um, by the time I release this video, it's probably gonna be over, but at the time filming this video, um, we are expecting Dorian. Maybe I was in a stormy weather kind of a <laughs> mood when I made this drop swirl, because it really looks like troubled seas and troubled oceans. Yes, it does. Okay. Note to myself, reduce my recipe or my batch size next time I use these molds because they are, they make a couple uh, less soaps than my other soap molds. So I have to take that into account next time I formulate for these molds. <laughs> Okay, let's put these to dry. And now let's move on to the other soap. So this one I made using a drop swirl technique. Let's cut. Ooh, I like, I think I like that one better. It also looks like stormy weather, <laughs> but more defined and more, I don't know, the lines are like sharper and the colors pop out better. You let me know if you prefer the in the pot swirl design for this soap or the drop swirl and you can um, answer. I will leave a poll um, right there, right up there. So you can click on it and let me know which of these you prefer. And whenever I'll be remaking this soap, I will use the technique that wins. But this one is my personal preference. So let's see what you guys think. Once all of the soaps are cut, we just space them on these drying trays. And I get a lot of questions every time I show my drying trays on my channel. So these are from soapequipment.com and they don't make them white anymore. I think they have them in green, but they're the exact same and they are uh, stackable trays and they come with um, rolling dollies 
and they're very practical. I have 30 of them and three dollies so I can move them around, switch them up, switch them up and it allows to uh, dry the soap from the bottom because these are vented drying trays so they're really, really, really useful. I love them and I've had these since um, 2012 so it's been six years, seven years. Perfect, now I'm gonna switch this and cut my other soaps because I made two batches. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. You can subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos. You can also enable notifications to be the first one uh, aware when I have some new content that I upload on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much. I will see you guys again very soon. These soaps will now go in the drying area for four to six weeks before they're available and ready to go.